Ich habe gerade erfahren, wir haben ähm, I've just found Zeit out geschenkt bekommen. That we've been given a gift of time. I didn't know that was possible to give someone time das heißt, wir können, as a gift. Äh, gerne etwas länger machen. But we can. Äh, das aber ich nicht wieder auf so dem Preis chat Fuß, weil ich dachte, so I'm not really ich öffne das mit zwei drei because I thought I would äh, Bemerkungen open this by making und, äh, two or three comments. Äh, halt mich dann mit einer Organisation der Diskussion then zurück. I wouldn't have to Vielleicht organize the discussion. So am, Maybe I'll just do that, you know. Vielleicht nenne ich aber But noch zwei, drei Spannungen, die ich sehe. Of, also wir haben ja well, Spannungen auf things. dem, also Spannungen äh, bitte äh, nicht, This is sort of of tension. nicht im, tension, im problematischen Sinne. Nicht im problematischen Sinne, you know what I'm saying. Äh, interessante sort of Spannung. Interesting Und, tension. Ähm, in a good way. können wir vielleicht produktiv machen Perhaps we can äh, miteinander. Use this dass, in a productive ähm, way ist einmal eine Spannung, wir haben es zum Schluss gehört, zwischen so a sort of der Frage, tension here between the question of when does analysis in turn also wann, into äh, affirmation? Hat man äh, dann den kritischen Punkt irgendwo nicht mehr in den Fingern? When in die have Hand, you sort of lost the critical point because eine Komplexität und eine Dynamik that system that you're talking about creates a complexity that makes it impossible for you to act in any sensible manner. We've understood that perception psychology has reached a con a the economy as well, that for designers and architects, this isn't such a new area. But in the combination of our discussion today, We have to ask the question, how do we generate attention on what level as well? How can we ensure that stakeholders who are in a passive situation, a situation of just tolerating something, how do we bring them out of that situation? Can it be done through actions on the ground? Do you have to relinquish urban space for this because it's too difficult there? Can one explain and carry out awareness raising activities from a perspective of above in a good and convincing manner? Or is this more the work that follows on from the information that you have if you're involved in design? So, these are some of the ideas going through my head. Now, if I start with my questions to get things going, that would be one option. But actually, what I'd like to do is ask you in the audience to ask any questions. So how about you do that? Das untereinander Gesprächsbedarf. Do you want to talk um, among one another up here? No, someone says. Thank you. Um, Verzeihen Sie, da ich, possibly, dass Sie vorher noch Ihren Namen I could ask you to say who you are before you speak. Alles Everything's okay. being recorded, you see. Uh, David Oswald. David Oswald. Um, ich glaub, Herr, Herr geht I think von Mr. Pridat is working on the assumption of a premise which in business uh, and marketing wird, is das often diese, used, diese Produkte, and that is ABSG, that this huge uh, range of products from A to Z noch in, in, Gebrauch, in, in terms Qualität, of function, quality, use, don't really differ from one another. Brand und and this is why they have to be distinguished um, through branding and advertising. So richtig explizit gemacht und ich He's würde not explicitly also saying this, but I'd like to, um, if he does intend that, I'd like to call that into doubt. I think that actually refrigerators differ from one another in today's world, and digital products vehemently differ from one another in a very 
in classic in sort of manner in terms of product glaub, quality, das, das in so among other things. In so einem nicht and I think daran, this does, the Ökonomie fact that this doesn't come up in a sort of theoretical structure is because I think that business and marketing Frage, have a blind eine, spot um, here, unlike designers. So that's perhaps a comment about an assumption I assume you're making, even though you didn't say it explicitly. And then there's a whole affirmative spin that you're putting on it. If you say, that's just how it is, everything's the same. But I think that you can actually make a difference here. I don't know if I can respond to that question. I read his book, you see, so I'm dying to answer. And it is indeed the case that you have products, consumer products, and then products plus meaning. And for designers, this is an old metaphor, good aesthetics, and there's you know, a promise made. And what's promised here is linked a tiny bit to the quality of the goods, but it can be separated from the quality of the product. So I think the question that comes up in design and in architecture to a certain extent and is important is the question of whether it is just the story being told around the product or whether the product itself in its materiality in terms of material assessments, the assessments of certain manufacturing technologies, etc., in its very sort of shape and design, without there being a frame created around it. You used the word, you said the products are virtue prothesis. Is that the case? Are products Virtue prosthetics, virtue prosthetics. I keep saying the word; it's so weird. Says the speaker. But you have right. Well, you're right. In 25 minutes, you cannot go into differentiation between products. Naturally, products themselves can explain themselves. I remember I bought a bad kettle; it broke. At home, went into a shop and saw 16 different kettles. And I see, naturally, sofort one. And of course, there was one I liked because its design looks nice. It was the only one that had a design. All the others just looked like kettles. And then I made an effort. You know, of course, I took the nice designer one. I said, all right, I'm not going to buy just some crap thing for 30 euros that just boils water. I bought one for 90 euros that has a brilliant design. I had a look at the technology. They all have the same bad technology. You know, they've got this sort of immersion heater component. They've got this sort of coil, heating coil. I have no idea how much power they use in terms of the environment. But I have to admit, it's not about the attributions of meaning through advertising in the sense of naming it, describing it. It's not just that. And that's perhaps the art of the designer to suggest that the product speaks for itself. But the market does something different out of all of this, because as soon as the product speaks for itself, it costs a lot more. It gets segmented. And if you don't have any money, you have to buy the cheap stuff. And if you're like me, and you think, all right, not 30 euros, I'll spend 90 euros, and then you buy it. The real art is, how do you ensure that the design, which is your job, I'm sure you're excellent at doing it. And I'm sure you can insist on it when you're talking to the CFO of a company. You can convince them. If every, it would be wonderful if every product had a wonderful design. But that would be a different world than the one we live in. In our world, it's highly diversified. I was just suggesting that we can immediately go into a differentiation of this world. But regarding the virtues, that expression I used, you know, virtues are like, you know, being able to do something. If the kettle shows me what it can do, just by looking at it, then it's sort of proudly showing that, and that's teaching me to deal with this in a good way. My Japanese tea suddenly tastes much nicer when I boil the water in this wonderful kettle. I feel good as soon as I come in my kitchen and see this designer kettle. You know, there's all sorts of effects. You know, here I am in this company, this crap 
Also, Shelf jetzt, jetzt, jetzt with all these different kettles. Groß. None of this Was is debated. Now we have to look at machen. what can you do with this thing? Because buying it isn't so decisive as using it. Using it at home doesn't have anything to do with business anymore. The business is it sells you the kettle and that's it. But the real use for you is later. How do you deal with it? Connecting it with the other things in your life. New worlds emerge that the markets aren't even interested. But that's a whole different debate. I've got two different questions that I can't really separate here. One is to plan Buddha, and one connects to the, what you just said and relates to Adorno too, because I think Adorno wouldn't just be shocked by the inflatable tiger. But the entire neighborhood would have put Odano off. I'm not saying that speculatively regarding this particular person. But we're talking about a systematic approach here, because in this neighborhood there's a production of reality that's taking place. It's a reality machine in its own way. And what I think in this context is something we should talk about is the moment of wish production. I haven't entirely understood what wish production entails. I remember 30 or 40 years ago, you might have said design is tailored to the needs. And then it's clear that you're taking a certain perspective on the individual. You ask them, you make lists, and you write it all down. But there it's about the satisfaction of a need. But I'm not seeing that term in what you're talking about, and I think there's a reason for that, and I want to know more about this. So what does the concept of the wish do in Plan Buddha's activities more than the older, dustier concept of interests and needs and tailoring design to them, etc.? Maybe I could try and respond to that. Perhaps there's another word we could use. One that we worked with as well, that is utopian excess, utopian surplus. Basically, a wish produces what it cannot have in reality. And in wishing, you start thinking about what you could have in reality. So that's just in a nutshell. Well, I think we've heard quite a few different things about effects, for example. And we're talking about a situation where you can't make political progress through rational convincing of people. And you have to refer to other things. And these are things that sort of push the envelope in a number of different ways. The concept of wish production is one from Gilles Deleuze on Felix Battery. It's linked to the idea of the wish machinery, the imaginary as a productive space, not as Freud and the psychoanalyst might have said, as a stage that reflects something that's going on. And these connections and this link means that you know the term wish production as a concept has something that's sort of over individual somebody comes along for me the whole thing you know basically we just started we just thought something out we thought about how we were going to present ourselves how we could get visibility November and then on the 6th of December, Nicolas, somebody comes along uh, with a present, this wonderful, model, monstrous uh, model that René described. So in moment, and in that so, moment, okay, I suddenly thought, OK, now we can really talk about wish production. Wow. It was just like, it's happening. Now we're sort of seeing rejoinders, a response. But the monster that you could talk about, you could respond to it. It was right there in the room. And you'd gotten away from this sort of white piece of paper phase. Or at least I had that feeling that they've understood what we want. We're not trying to just ask what people's needs are and count them out, but more. 
ist auch was völlig anderes bei rausgekommen, muss man sagen. And the result was a completely different also, one too. Reeperbahn Bedürfnisse. I mean the Reeperbahn, if you talk about your needs there, what are your needs in the red light district? Ich frage dir deshalb nach, weil der, der Begriff der Wunschproduktion well, asking, die eine Seite of wish hat, die wir eben besprochen has haben, one das side that we've already talked about, that an imaginary world opens up or that you can talk das, about utopian den, surpluses or in the ESSO building's new design project, project, what I think so striking, and correct me if I've understood it wrong, it sort of emerged from a defensive approach a defense of the quality of life in these neighborhoods. And it doesn't just stop by defending what exists as it is, but that you can only really get a movement going if you don't just cling to what you have already in a sort of persistent, dogged way, but open yourself to the new. All right, I really do have to correct you. We would not have done this if we could have kept the buildings as they were. Then we would have tried a different strategy. We would have also looked at wish production too. But, you know, people were sort of saying the visibility, the readability of cities are disappearing. The people who used to live there are disappearing. So many different things came up together and nobody wanted these buildings to be demolished. And so we thought we have to think of something to retain our city. So, to begin with, there was the no. And it really wasn't that easy in the beginning because wish production for me is a very sort of cheerful concept. And it wasn't a very cheerful start. You know, it was very subdued. People had lost their apartments, and they really just wanted to have them back. They wanted to just stay there with their friends, their families, everything they knew. So in the first two or three months, we didn't actually talk about this concept of wish production very much for the first few months. It was a very subdued beginning, because it was a very bitter reality that we were seeing when the people were affected. Just briefly, I don't want to say I'm an Adornoist here, though you may think that, but there's one thing I would like to say to his credit. He was certainly not against the need for kitsch or however you described the neighborhood that you were talking about there. He didn't say that it's justified. He just said it's just not everything. And my question around wish production to the colleagues here, you know, if I'm listening to you, there are two things I think about. One is that I say, well, great. In my age, I think I can say these are positions that we used to have when I was younger, and now they're back. That's great. But what makes me a little bit skeptical in your case is that the world that you're showing me there is so wonderful. It's so beautiful. I always think of Nina Hagen, who sang that song, Alles so schön bunt here. Everything is so beautiful here and colorful and interesting. Then I get a bit skeptical, so defend me. Do you live in Berlin? I do live in Berlin. Wow. What did you think where I live? My colleagues from Frank France taught us that you can have everything we have here in the countryside. So that's worth thinking about. Sure, but in the capital of the Prussian Protestantism, I think dressing down is very important. I don't think you know Berlin very well. Well, if everything's colorful, it's all cheerful and wonderful and exciting. And the concept starts slipping into some other thing. It isn't colorful and bright and wonderful what we did there or what came out of it. The playfulness of dance and false glamour is there a little bit, but that's exactly what it's about in that particular street, apart from the high share of social housing that we managed to achieve. Well, we were also asking whether design can change society, and I think it's important to say that we can't just look at this presentation because these bright colors, they are there. Maybe it's a way of starting a discussion with somebody or launching 
finishing a process in the way that we did. But I don't think you can say this is just colorfulness and there's nothing behind it, but perhaps I misunderstood you. It's not really my thing either. But what's interesting for me is what came out of the whole process, the actual results, that we're not talking about sort of space and prices and whether it can be appropriated or not. And, we're, you know, we discuss things from the facade, where's the square going to be, you know, what sort of pathways do we want to have? There's a conflict there, so it does get quite serious and not just colorful. I'm a very impolite person, and I haven't even introduced the two of you. I'm very pleased that you're here from Bureau d'Etudes. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I've been neglecting you two. I'm going to do something that I haven't been asked to do. But I want to do. I want to do some advertising for an amazing book, Atlas of Agendas, which is the book in which many of the maps are recorded. I don't have it with me, unfortunately. And there's a little magnifying glass in the beginning so that you can look at everything in, in the depths of the structure. You can have a really good look. And I'd like to ask a question to the two of you here. And the question is, how do these maps play with the stakeholders? They didn't emerge because of general interest, just for research reasons. Have I understood that correctly? But rather, there are target groups. Maybe you could say something about these target groups. These people. Noch einmal langsam, diese Karten. For, for whom? It's a question. You are very different contexts. Because, uh, for example, um, you have this map of the media, it's for co a cooperative for autonomous media. You have uh, the situation with uh, agriculture. You, we are involved uh, in, a, in a struggle, in a, um, in, uh, in the countryside, you have a situation with, with the migrants, where you have more, more maps about um, the European uh, prison for migrants. Uh, it's, it's very dependent. For example, we make a, a work in Chile. It's more about uh, uh, you have like a six family who control after uh, Pinochet the, the country, and we make map about that. It's dependent. Mm. One question concerning your work. How do you investigate? How long does it take to make these wonderful maps? For the States, it was quite uh, long because uh, you have also theoretical problem in that because in a political uh, theory, you have a uh, it's not, um, <laughs> they don't speak about the state, but just about uh, administrative system, and it's just a part of, and a political system, but just a few parts of that. We are in a huge, more complex uh, system of the state now. And then uh, we make many versions to, and there are different investigations in different fields to, to produce uh, the maps about the states. After, you have also specific maps. Hmm. There is an interesting effect. As soon as you find something in a book, it's credible. And you have an author, you can criticize or comment. But if you have a complex structure, like a map, people tend to ask, is it true? Are the relations correct? How do you justify or legitimize, sorry for this word, your research? It depends of, of maps. There are some maps where we can make a stronger critics of the organizations be because we tried a lot. 
it's very difficult to have information about our, our system. It's not so easy to specifically in, um, in the structure of ownership because it's just a part of the, um, uh, of the property. Uh, and uh, yes, it's not so easy to... Uh, for example, we make also investigation in, uh, in some clubs and to have members to connect with the think tanks. And it's difficult also to have data and the, the, the map about the control of media. You see that you have a certain level also in, um, in libraries. Uh, some, sometimes you, f you find some fragments uh, we make a studies in California about the club and uh, we make some fragments in uh, uh, libraries, but just few fragments after you have some articles and it's very fragmentary. Mm. In addition, and I try to speak slowly, I was fascinated by your work, in particular because of the structures you observe, and in particular about the visualization of the structures. You show them in a visual way, in spite of the fact that these structures are often very abstract. There are very small elements. They are co co colorful, which attract my attention. And um, I wonder, is the representation the way to attract attention. And I wonder who is the party you address, so to speak. I mean, how do you communicate? How do you make these maps known? I mean, your work refers to realities. And I wonder how does it enter the discourse of society and maybe change things? Maps about uh, agriculture. We make a newspaper with uh, 10,000 copies and we distribute it in an um, agriculture uh, salon. Salon for agriculture. Fair. Uh, fair. <laughs> <Right>, fair. <laughs> fair. Uh, agriculture fair. <laughs> but uh, for example, for the control of the media, we publish it in uh, uh, 30,005. Uh, 35,000 copies in a, it's unrecuptible, it's like a newspaper um, in France. But uh, it's not just a question of um, number of copies, because uh, first we finance copies through artistic system, uh, a lot. So sometimes also with autonomous uh, financement. And after we take a stock and we diffuse it in, uh, in different networks where we give, we give copies and we find these, the maps everywhere we are, we, we, we go in different groups. Uh, many people say they have the maps and, uh, and uh, in a way the idea is also, we, we make this maps because at this time you have all this debate about slogan in political context and you have a, Yes, a way of struggle. And we think uh, slogan is not sufficient. It's important to, to have um, cognitive, uh, uh, to have uh, social knowledge and popular knowledge about the system and to develop cognitive, cognitive process, also to, to, to have more interesting struggle with the system. Mm. Reactions? Any any reactions? Political reactions? Sometimes, yes, you have a censorship. Sometimes we, for example, in an exhibition in a, in a museum, uh, it's about um, the place where you have um, nuclear waste in France. And uh, the, the people uh, from the... The region uh, say to the, uh, the director of the museum, if they participate to the exhibition, you are 
<laughs> it was a, a, an exhibition about uh, invisible uh, landscape, mm. and we was um, we were there the, the first. Yes, it was it's, it's art in the art system. Uh, this exhibition, and uh, the idea of the exhibition is also coming from uh, from our wor our work. I think at the beginning, mm -hmm. and uh, yes, we we make this um, maps about um, about. This, uh, we wanted to to make research about the the, the maps that called micro micro lut in Limousin. It was in the center of, of wow. France. This place. It's all the very small st struggles since two thousand years yes. in this place. <laughs> we wanted to yes to to visit this mm. to visit this and on the on the top of the map we we say we think about uh, yes what is the the new struggle now at this moment in this place and it was about the, the we found the struggle about uh, nuclear uh, waste in this uh, place and uh, yes and the map is coming uh, on the on the desk of the the financial uh, because it was a, a regional muse museum and it's the fi financial uh, no it's not uh, the president of the region of the region yes we don't know how this map arrives there but uh, yes, yes he said this this is not an artist this is an anarchist uh, it's not a, it would be yes so it's it threw out but it's the first it's a but for example when we make the map about Lagardère uh, we have with a three, three, uh, 30,000 copies, we think, uh, we, we see a lawyer because we think uh, maybe you have, we, we have a process with a, um, a trial with, um, with Lagardère. But the, the day where the map uh, are published, uh, the, the, um, yeah, the CEO, the creator of this company died. That's why <laughs> you have the publication, you have, I think there are other problems to, to solve that, that this map, yes. I would like to come back to a fundamental aspect. In the audience, there are very different attitudes with respect to what we could call a fundamental structure of society, the bureau d'études, wants to analyze the machine of reality, I think, and they say we tried on a smaller scale because it's more interesting. And that's also why we focus on rural areas, but it's definitely turning away from property or certain labor relations. It's a lot about experiments in society. And on the other hand, Bega Pridat is here, for example, and we invited him in order to also focus on the hot spots of change. I wonder, where do you see the hot spots of change? And do you think that the economic structure everything is based on is flexible enough so that the change you can envisage or you would like to see can happen at all? Or would we need different frames which are elements of cultural processes of English Inclusion and exclusion. Both. The example from Hamburg, the collective process in the neighborhood, we don't know whether it's going to be sustainable or not. But it's a political unit now. A political unit has come into being. I mean, you don't do neighborhood processes twice. Oh, you do. Okay. So you can really learn how to do it. But the question is, how does this translate into other fields? And that's beyond the market, definitely. The neighborhood, well, in the neighborhood it's possible, maybe also in associations, in, in different scenes. I do see the potential. I mean, compare the situation uh, 50 years ago, it wouldn't have been possible to make politics beyond politics or without any relationship with politics. 
So we have gained something. I mean, I'm not talking about an individual neighborhood, but also with respect to the markets. The market is very differentiated today. Without any competence, without any skills or money, you can establish a startup, you can implement an idea, and others pay for it. It's being funded. I mean, 90% of all these enterprises fail in the end. The money is lost, but... The people have learned something. Often it doesn't work because people try to implement their ideas or try to sell their ideas instead of focusing on the ideas of others, of their users or clients. Anyway, what we are seeing today is very different from what we saw 15 or 20 years ago. In the past, people had to get a loan, a credit, first of all, before they could invest, first of all, and so on and so forth. So we do hear more music today, actually. But in the collective scene, in the flexible startup scene, in the social entrepreneurship scene, we see a different approach with respect to the very construction of the market. It's temporary, it's local, it's project-related. It's no longer the long-term perspective. It's rather a short-cut tactic. It's an experiment. It's not a strategy. It's tactics. It's an experiment, and people try and see whether it works or not. Sometimes I do see a lot of marketing imagination. A startup with 50,000 followers won't work, but if you find 3 million followers, you'll be successful. The question is, how do you get this started? I mean, it implies also a bit of social hubris, and the collective processes are instable, too. There is a lot of euphoria and enthusiasm in the beginning, and in the end, you just have the militants, a few active people, and the rest is getting lost, and then they start to organize, form a political party. In former times, it was a social movement. Today, it's a political party, and then you get your traditional structures. So this is about the institutionalization we've mentioned before. The question is, do we need it? And if so, what form of institutionalization do we need? What are the institutions we need for these machines of desire? Because desire or wishes is what matter in the beginning. So how do we establish stable structures, solid structures? That's definitely a question I'd like to ponder. I don't have to ponder the market. They work as such. There is a lot of investment. There's a lot of speculation. There is a lot of scope. And there's also a lot of imagination. And the new projects are imaginary projects, imagination projects, which are being implemented in a process and become reality or not. The fictional, the imaginary, the creative matters in markets today, very different from what we saw 30 years ago. In the past, you had the R&D departments of big organizations. Today, we have these aspects involved. <laughs> I don't agree, but that's what you are here for. Also, I glaube that dieses Panel, ich dachte erst, es macht nicht viel Sinn, es macht auf eine gewisse First, Art I thought this Sinn, panel ich, would not make sense, ja but it does make sense, because der, you uh, had a wonderful ja, way uh, of describing uh, uh, the, 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 the consumer society uh, and its das, access uh, to the system, which, so to speak, the um, other extreme, the extreme pole as against to what we want. And yet it shows the range of possibilities. So it's not by chance that we talk about emotion here, too, but it's also a new combat zone. And I don't want you to argue against this combat zone. I do think it exists, like, for example, all the proposals you can make via iTunes. I mean, as soon as I saw the hit rate, they get I sort. The proposals aren't bad. 
And um, I need to cancel my also subscription lust, ich, because I don't want to und, um, make the system be yeah, even smarter. Ich, uh, I haven't sagen, used eben, uh, iTunes uh, uh, since und, und, then, since the day war, I realized Kohle its smartness. Von, um, But then uh, I also der, see uh, those uh, polls uh, on another level. Also der Macht der, des Staates, der, the power uh, of the state, Herrschaft, sozusagen, the uh, dominance, the rulers, diese, diese annimmt, um, uh, which zum Glück jetzt noch are reinkam, finding das ist, uh, much more Aber, ja, liquid forms. Ich denke, das ist eine andere, sehr spannende Debatte right. wäre, über die This would be a different debate, an exciting debate. We also have to talk about money, I think. There are very different forms of money, different responsibilities, actions and reactions. That's definitely an exciting debate. Well, I, I wonder, why do you hope? that it will work. Also, ich glaube, in Griechenland ist ganz in Greece, for example, it's very difficult to um, establish a so startup um, right now. Der wenigen, ich lese ja möglichst wenig ökonomische Bücher, aber I don't einer, read der many economic books, hat und die Anzahl der Firmen but there was one who counted the number of companies in Germany and showed that the number of enterprises is Uh, dropping Zahl, also since the 1980s, it has ja, dropped. So Startup, a new und, enterprise, und sounds good, but they are being die, bought uh, <laughs> quickly. Uh, schon sehr lange and all this Ende moves into the direction Bureau d'Etude has described for a long time. In the end, you only have the six major groups that participates in each and every product, except maybe a small bakery. Thank you very much. We have received a gift time, but it's over, so we have to stop. And I would like to thank you all, and I would like to invite you to join us in half an hour in the Café Global. See you there. In 20 minutes. Sorry, it's going to continue in 20 minutes.